So what I'd like to do now is to show you um, an example. Well, we just did an example here about local maxes and mins. Right, we were looking at this and trying to find the maximum or minimum of some equation. And again, the steps were, if we go back here, the steps were find where the derivative is equal to zero and then use a sign diagram to check that the sign changes from left to right. And you might think, who cares about this? We can just take a guess if it's a max or a min. Well, it turns out it's not always a max or a min. So here's my question here. You know, why not just find where the derivative is equal to zero? Now, the reason I don't want to just do that is because, so I'm going to maybe answer the question, so to speak. So because, oops, it's really lousy letters. Here we go. So because um, it may not be a max or min. It's possible that it's not a max or a min. And here's an example of a very, very simple function. So maybe this is the function here, y equals, or the equation, y equals x cubed. We want to find the local max or the min. Well, we can use the steps that we did before. Step one, find where the derivative is equal to zero. So if we do that, then we can say find then step one. Well, the derivative, see y prime is going to be, well, the three comes in front, so three times x, and it's three minus one is two. That's it. So I set that equal to zero. So zero equals three times x squared. That's great. Um, if I want to get x by itself, then I could divide by three. So zero divided by three is still zero. And then I want to get x by itself. So I take the pos uh, plus or minus the square root. The square root of zero is still zero. So x equals zero. Awesome. Uh, well, it's plus or minus zero, but I mean, that doesn't make any sense. So we'll just say x equals zero. You say, great. So then step two. Let's check with a sign diagram. Let's check what the derivative does left or right of that point. So I'm gonna draw myself a number line that'll represent x. And I'm gonna look at the point I'm interested in. So in this case right here, this point right here, that's gonna be zero. That's what I'm looking at. So to the left of zero, what does my derivative do? And to the right of zero, what is my derivative? At least oh, we just care about if it's positive or negative. So maybe what I'll do is I'll write that down. So here we're looking at the deriv that's what we're looking at. That's because sometimes I do sign diagrams with second derivatives and other things. So to me, I find it helps just to remind myself. Anything up here, I'm looking at the sign of the derivative. So deriv, short for derivative. Now let's take a look at what was the equation for the derivative here. Derivative equation was just, um, well, it was 3x squared. So if I take a point to the left of zero, let's say I make it negative anything. Let's say it's negative one. At negative one, let's see what the what happens here. I have negative one squared would be still a positive value. A positive times a positive would be a positive. Awesome. What if I go to the right? Well, to the right, let's see. Now I've still got three. Three is still a positive number. But then I've got, uh, let's say, one here. So one squared is one. One times three is still, well, this is still positive here. So I got a positive times a positive still gives me a positive. It didn't change sign. So what this tells me then is that this right here is not a max or a min. That's the important thing here. Okay. So, so it didn't change sign. Technically, I should say the derivative. You know, the derivative didn't change sign. So x equals 0 is neither. In other words, there are no, whoops, there are no max or mins. Well, there's no local max or min. Now, if you're not sure about that, you can take a look at the equation here, but actually this graph looks like this. I mean, y equals x cubed does something like this. So the thing is, here at this point, the derivative is, is zero. See, at this point, technically right here, the slope of the tangent is zero. So that right there would be, you know, the, a horizontal line here to match this. That's fine. But if you look at this to the left of it, it's still an increasing function. And to the right of it, it's still an increasing function. See, it goes from positive to a positive. That means this is not a max and it's not a min. 
So that's possible for it to be neither. That is allowed. I just wanted to point that out, that it doesn't always have to be a max or a min. It actually, this is like a trick question. You know, find any local max or min. Ha ha, there aren't any. Right, because this right here, although the derivative is zero, it doesn't. The derivative doesn't change sign left or right of that point. So that means this is not a max. It's not a min. It's nothing. In other words, there's no local max or a min. Now we can also write a little bit more here. I just want to say this: that um, so this trick. So finding. Maybe I'll write it like this: finding max or min. Uh, is quite useful. I mean, it's useful not just in math, but we can use it, like I said, in economics. So here's, I mean, I'll give you maybe, yeah, I'll give you two examples from economics here. So, whoops, that was really bad underlining. I need to undo that. There we go. So let's say we look at economics. We want to, I don't know, we want to minimize costs, let's just say. So if you want to do that, maybe you have a graph of maybe, you know, products you're producing and maybe this is the cost for every product here. And maybe your graph does something like this. So maybe it says, you know, obviously if I, if I make this many products, then it costs me this much to make them. Well, obviously I want to minimize my costs. So what, you know, how many products should I make in order to minimize my cost per item? Well, I can look at that and say, well, that, at least if I want to minimize costs, then that would be something like this, right? That would be this right here, this value. So finding that minimum might be important there. Or of course, maybe you want to maximize profits, of course. Uh, by the way, there's a lot more to economics than just this. You can actually find what's called the marginal cost, and there's all sorts of things you can do here. But for the moment, let's just so you might want to minimize something, or you might want to maximize something. So maybe I have an equation like profit as a function of x. Maybe this is profits. Well, then maybe my profits do, I don't know, maybe something like this. Well, maybe then I want to know, obviously, the thing that you know gives me the most money when I'm done. Oh, well, that's I want to maximize my profits, right? If I do any more, then I actually minimize my profits. Maybe it costs more for whatever reason, so then my profits are less. Because profit is all about, um, you know, income and costs you know, and the difference between them, right? I mean, a profit is all about how much money comes in compared to how much money goes out. But if I figured out whatever that is and I have my profit, let's say, well, I want my profits to be maximum, of course. So that could be something from economics. Or maybe I use something from physics. I mean, this is just a couple little examples. There's tons. You can do this in chemistry and biology as well. But since I have a physics background, this is something I understand more. Maybe we want to find out, I don't know, the maximum height. So maybe this is someone who's been, I don't know, launched out of a cannon. It could be anything here. So maybe I have the height as a function of, whoops, instead of x, I'll actually say time. That's maybe a better physics -y one. So let's say, as a function of time, I have my height. So let's say I was launched from a cannon. Well, maybe then my height goes something like this, like we like this. I might want to know what's my maximum height, or uh, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do. I mean, this is just three quick, simple little examples, but there are tons of them. So finding the maximum or a minimum of a function is very helpful in lots of things in biology, chemistry, physics, economics, all over the place. So the main idea is, again, you find where your derivative is zero because that's that's uh, you're using this property that at a maximum or a minimum value, your tangent has a slope of zero. Right? If I sort of drew a tangent line right here, I would have a slope of zero here. And over here, a tangent line would be like this, so it would have a slope of zero. And the same thing over here. But you also have to check that it changes sign from left to right. So here it goes from an increasing to a decreasing. So derivative is positive to the left, derivative is negative to the right, so that would be a max. Same thing here. Over here, though, to the left, the derivative is negative. To the right, derivative is positive, so it's a min. So all that just to explain that we can use derivatives to find local max and local min. And now we've learned about drawing sine diagrams.